Have a seat, Mr. Lima. Oh, thank you, Mr. Shane. It was good of you to wait for me in your office this evening to see me. Oh, you sounded pretty upset over the phone. Oh, I am, senor, I am. It is all so bewildering, I do not know what to do, where to turn. Then the thought occurred to me that perhaps someone like you could help me. Well, you're not the only one who's bewildered, Lima. Uh, senor? I'm in the dark, too. You still haven't told me what this is all about. All you said over the phone was you wanted to see me right away. Oh, but of course. Uh, you must excuse me, Senor Shane. It is just that I have been so upset. Mm -hmm. You see, I flew up from Havana this morning. Oh, is that your home down there? Yes, it is. I have extensive holdings in and around Havana and have lived there for a little more than two years now. You up here in New Orleans on a vacation? Oh, no, indeed, Senor. I came up because of my friend Julian. His last letter sounded so urgent, I felt... Hey, I look, Lamer, do me a big favor, would you? Well, of course, senor. What is it? Start from the beginning. I'm way behind. Oh, but of course, senor. Now, you live in Havana. Yes. You have a friend here in New Orleans named Julian. Yes. What about him? I, I have not seen Julian since I went to Havana. And then I have not heard from him. And then suddenly yesterday I received a letter from him saying he was in danger. He wanted me to come up here right away. Uh-huh. Is he in danger? Julian? Well, that's what we're talking about, isn't it? Oh, but of course, senor. Uh, now, remember, I received this letter from Julian only yesterday. You said that once. Uh, when I arrived here, I went at once to Julian's address. And, senor Shane, it is impossible. I cannot believe it. Can't believe what? Senor, they told me Julian has been dead. For two years. In a moment, we'll return to the new adventures of Michael Shane and the case of the corresponding corpse. just about everything. When a little character named Lima waltzed into my office from Havana and told me he'd just gotten a letter from a man who'd been dead for two years, I must admit it rocked me back a little. And judging from the expression on Lima's face, the whole experience had rocked him, and plenty. I tell you, it is not possible Julian is dead, Mr. Shane. There must be some mistake. Well, look, Lima, maybe somebody else wrote that letter to you. No, no, no. Julian was my friend. I knew his handwriting like I know my own. And the things he said in his letter he proved to me beyond all doubt that it was Julian who was writing. Hmm. Well, in that case, it looks like your friend's alive now. But, but no, senor. They tell me he's dead. Oh, now, look, he can't be both. Well, I know it sounds insane. Senor. But it is impossible Julian is dead. And yet, they tell me it is impossible for him to be alive. Just a minute. Uh, now, that is where you come in, Senor Shane. Me? Yes. I want to hire you to try and find Julian if he, uh, as I still hope, is alive. And, uh, and if he is uh, dead, then I want you to find out that, too. Uh, here is my telephone number. I don't know. It looks like a pretty crazy assignment. Uh, <clears throat> for a hundred dollars... I'd find the job not half so crazy. Uh-huh. Okay, give me the address where Julian used to live and drop in here at the office tomorrow. I may have something for you. Of course, I wasn't nearly as sure of that as I sounded. The next morning, I went to the address Lehman had given me, the place where his friend Julian had lived. It was a little ramshackle, two-story building near the waterfront. On the first floor were two shops, and up above them were a few furnished rooms. One of the shops had a sign over the door which read, Yi Fong, Tropical Fish. Not a very nice thing to say about yourself. I went in, and a chubby little gent with horn-rimmed glasses and a broad grin waddled up to me. Ah, so, good morning. You'd like to buy some fine tropical fish? Uh, no. What I want is a little tropical information. Yes. How many good guppies? Uh, see, all tanks to left, guppies. Yeah. Yeah, lots of guppies. Now, uh... Yes, everybody buy guppies. Uh, not quite. Now, look, a guy named Julian used to live up over the shop. Yes. You like guppies? Well, I haven't anything against them, but about this Julian... Yes, uh, yes. Giant ancestor. Yeah, how long ago? Yes. You like buy some guppies? No, I don't like to buy some guppies. How long ago did Julian die? One, two years ago. What happened to him? Yes. Uh, do not know. One day they tell me he is dead. Ah, uh, so... Mister, you sure... No guppies. The 
king of the guppies bowed me gracefully to the door and out. The shop next door also had a sign out front. This one read A. Valdane, Passport Service. Inside, a tall, thin gent sitting on a high stool greeted me as I stepped through the door. Come in, my friend, come in. A. Valdane at your service. Perhaps a little passport information? Not today. Expert passport photos, too. Reasonable. Uh Uh-uh. What I want is... Information. uh, As a matter of fact, yeah. How'd you know? Thin walls, my friend. You're the first man who, to my knowledge, has ever walked out of the place next door without a bowl full of guppies. (laughs) You know, something. for a moment it looked like Yi Fung was going to keep his record intact. Well, you've probably heard what or who I was talking about then. The the guy named Julian. (laughs) You too, hmm? What do you mean? There was a loony little guy in here yesterday claiming Julian was alive. Oh, Lima. Look, did you know Julian very well? No, only slightly. He lived in one of the rooms upstairs. That's about all I knew about him. And there's no doubt about his death, huh? Not as far as I know. How did Julian die? Well, Julian was quite a water lover. He used to go out in a little boat a lot. One night, a storm came up out in the Gulf. The next morning, they found Julian's boat floating upside down. No Julian. No Julian ever since. Did uh, anyone actually see him drown? Who's running around during storms watching people drown? Yeah, you got a point there. Look, did you know any of Julian's friends who he ran around with? Anything like that? Well, like I say, I didn't know him very well. He had a girl whose name was Celeste. They used to hang out at Maxim's Bar a lot. Okay, anyone else? Not that I can... No, 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 wait. I I did see Julian talking to the professor a couple of times. The professor? You mean the old drifter over on Exchange Street? Yes, that's the one. Character who knows just about everyone. We'll gladly tell you all about them for the price of a drink. Mm Mm-hmm. Oh, thanks, (laughs) Valtain. I headed for Maxim's bar where Valdane had said Celeste and Julian used to spend some time. On the way, I got the feeling I was being followed, but I couldn't spot anyone. I don't know, maybe it was just my imagination. When I got to Maxim's, I asked a bartender about Celeste. Found out she dropped in almost every day. So I sat down at a table and waited. About an hour later, a girl who answered the bartender's description of Celeste came in and sat down. I eased over to her table. Hello. Hello. Can I join you? Why not? Thanks. You, uh, used to be Julian's girlfriend, huh? Yeah. All right, go ahead. Have your fun. Well, I'm afraid I don't get it. What are you trying to do? Make me feel like a big heel or something? Yeah, look, Celeste. Sure, I play up to the boys now, you and the others. A girl's got to to get along. But I was Julian's girl. Don't you forget that. Sure, I was his girlfriend. What do you think I've been trying to forget for two years? Him, Julian. Now, you come along and throw his name up to me. Look, Celeste, I'm not trying to make you feel like a heel, and I'm sorry if mentioning his name's made you feel bad. Julian's not alive. Are you kidding? Of course he's not alive. He's been dead for two years. That's all I wanted to know, Celeste. Thanks. I was beginning to think Valdane knew what he was talking about when he said Lima was slightly off his trolley for thinking Julian was still alive. But I still had that other lead Valdane had given me, the professor over on Exchange Street. I found the professor at his usual corner, sitting on a packing crate, holding forth to a few bewildered floaters. He was a scarecrow of a man, dressed as always in a dilapidated cutaway coat, open-toed shoes that weren't designed that way, and a wing collar with no tie. And so I say, gentlemen, that the curse of our age, our civilization, is our mechanistic, high-speed, materialistic approach. Aesthetics is a forgotten word. The love of beauty, for its own sake, has paled before the ruthless march Hello, of... Hello, Professor. Mr. Shane, how do you do, sir? Indeed, it's been quite some time since you last visited this humble thoroughfare. Yeah, still educating the masses, huh? Yeah, yes, trying in my own feeble way to impart some small yearning for the higher things into the unfortunate souls. A, a discouraging task, to be sure. Uh, look, could I talk to you a minute? Certainly, certainly. We will discuss this subject further at some later date, gentlemen. 
I must now grant a private audience to my friend here. Hmm. Will you join me on this humble crate, Mr. Shane? Uh, or shall we adjourn to more comfortable surroundings where we may, uh, perchance, uh, partake of some small but cheering... Uh, uh... I want your answers to make sense. We stay here. I question greatly the merits of your decision, but will yield temporarily to your puritanism. What is it you want? Do you remember a guy named Julian? Julian? Of course I do. A charming scoundrel and a generous one. In the old days, he used frequently to purchase cheering libations for me in return for small but useful bits of information which I was able to do. Yeah, to... yeah. Look, what did Julian do for a living anyway, Professor? Mr. Shane, it was not what Julian did for a living. It was whom he did. Oh, I see. Julian was quite a boy to work all the angles, huh? His talents along those lines were tremendous. Uh, he had a small but efficient organization and based a very successful career on assorted projects such as blackmail, connivory, forgery, and an entire line of bunco enterprises, which showed Julian to be a man of great imagination. Hmm. Many of Julian's old outfits still around? Well, I have heard one of them is. Uh, I don't know. And Julian? My dear sir, Julian died two years ago. Yeah. And you don't have any reason for thinking otherwise? Certainly not. Okay, Professor, thanks. Not at all, Mr. Shane. I'm always glad to help, even if at some discomfort to myself. What do you mean? Well, simply that I suffer from a peculiar condition of the throat. Excessive conversation, uh, particularly when helpful information is involved, uh, dries out the delicate membranes and causes... Yeah, yeah. Okay, Professor. Here you are. I accept your voluntary contribution, sir. Not merely for myself, but in the name of all disconsolate and thirsty humanity. And I thank you. So now I was fresh out of Leeds. I'd gotten nowhere. Lemo was waiting for me in my office, and when I told him that as far as I was concerned, the case was closed, his face fell a mile. What thing of shame? You cannot mean that you, you, will not help me anymore. Look, Lemo, Julian died two years ago, so a couple of days ago, you, you say you got a letter which you think was written by him. I do not think. I know. Yeah, yeah. Look, look there's something I don't quite get about you. You say you and Julian were friends, yet from what I hear, Julian was quite an unsavory character. Blackmail, bunco, etc. I, uh, well, perhaps Julian was a little weak where money was concerned. But he was always a good friend to me. Well, there's another angle about this that interests me, too, Lima. You told me you suddenly acquired some holdings in Cuba a couple of years ago. And Julian was a blackmailer. What are you talking about? You, uh, got those holdings legitimately, I'm sure. Well, of course I did. Mr. Shane, I'm not hiding you to make foolish insinuations about me, but to find Julian. You're absolutely right, and I'm telling you, Julian's dead. No, no, please. You must keep looking. Look, it's no use, Lehman. Please, Mr. Shane. Please, I beg of you. Money is no objection with me. You, you must keep on looking for Julian. You sure have a lot of faith that he's alive, Lehman. Okay, I'll take one more crack at it. I went back to the waterfront and into Val Dane's passport place. I was hoping there might be some other lead he could give me, something he'd forgotten before. But he just laughed at me. So I left. Then as I was walking along the sidewalk, a little character sidled up to me. Shane? Huh? Well, yeah, who are you? You're looking for Julian, Shane? Julian? I was, but no more. Why? Why no more? Because it's sort of silly to look for a dead man. But you're wrong, Shane. Julian's alive. He's what? I'm telling you, Julian's alive. I saw him with my own eyes only yesterday. In a moment, we'll return to the new adventures of Michael Shane and the case of the corresponding corpse. It all started when a little guy named Lima from Havana told me he'd gotten a letter from a friend of his, Julian, here in New Orleans, saying he was in trouble and asking Lima to come up. When Lima arrived in New Orleans, they told him Julian had been dead for two years. 
He didn't believe it, so he hired me to find Julian. I went to the address where Julian used to live, a two-story building with two shops downstairs and some rooms upstairs. Yi Fong, who sold tropical fish, said Julian was dead. So did a gent named Valdane, who ran a passport service next door. Celeste, Julian's girlfriend, and a character called the Professor were also unanimous that Julian was dead. So there I was, walking along the sidewalk, ready to give the whole thing up, when a little guy sidled up to me fast. I'm giving it to you straight, Shane. Julian's alive. Look, how, who are you, anyway? What's your angle? Well, just call me Joey. And put it down, I'm a pal of Julian's. Now, I heard it around you've been looking for him. So, I thought that maybe there might be something in it for him. Uh, and for me, of course, I could tell you where to find him. Look, there'll be plenty in it for both of you, if I find him. Well, okay, I'll take a chance. When I bumped into Julian yesterday, he wrote his address down on a piece of paper for me. Here it is. Okay, thanks. Incidentally, have you by any chance been following me around the last day or two? Me? No. Why? Oh, skip it. Thanks for the information. I took the piece of paper and compared it with a sample of Julian's handwriting Lima had given me. It matched. I headed for the address on the piece of paper. And again, on the way over, I had the feeling I was being followed. But like before, I couldn't spot anyone. Julian's address turned out to be just a block away from the place where he used to live. The door to the room was ajar, so I pushed it the rest of the way open and went in. Yeah, there was someone in the room, all right. But it wasn't Julian. What are you doing here? Well, Julian's girlfriend, Celeste. So maybe Julian isn't as dead as you tried to make me think before, huh? Uh, I don't know what Come you're on, talking quit about. Come on, Chris Dawley. I... Come on. All right. But I was telling you the truth before. I I didn't know then that Julian was alive. Just an hour ago, he called me and told me to meet him here. I came right over. He was here, Julian, my Julian. Where is he now? Well, he said he had some things to do, that he'd, he'd meet me later at Maxim's Bar. Why do you want to know these things? Who are you? It doesn't matter who I am. You've already told me what I want to know. Just one more thing. What size guy is Julian? Why, he's short. Short guy, huh? Okay, Celeste. Thanks a lot. And all of a sudden, the trail had gotten very hot. I went down the stairs and outside, and as I started down the sidewalk, I was thinking about what Celeste had told me, that Julian was a short guy. I started checking off the people I'd been running around with lately. The professor and Valdane, both tall men. And Lima, Yi Fang, King of the Guppies, and Joey, the guy who'd slipped Julian's new address in my hand a little while ago, they were all short guys. And then I remembered my feeling about being followed. So I decided to find out who it was. I turned a corner, slipped into an alley, and waited. I waited 15 minutes, but nobody came along. So I finally gave up and went into the store next door and over to the payphone. Lamer, this is Shane. Well, it looks like you were right after all. Yeah, yeah, about Julian being alive. And now look, calm down, will you? Look, meet me at my office in 15 minutes and I'll tell you all about it. I went outside and continued down the street. As I approached Julian's old address, I spotted Yi Fong and Valdane both lounging around in front of their shops. Ah, so happy gentlemen maybe would like to buy some fine. Oh, so is you. Well, you don't sound very happy about it. I do not like people who do not like fine guppies. Look, I told you I've got nothing against guppies. I just... Oh, skip it. Still running around looking for dead men, Shane? Yeah, Valdane. Only suddenly one of them isn't so dead anymore. Julian? <laughs> don't tell me he's come to life. Don't be too surprised if he did. I'd be very surprised. You know, you sound awfully sure about him being dead. Do I? Well, I didn't kill Julian, if that's what you mean. Didn't know him well enough. Matter of fact, if you're really interested, I wasn't even around when he died. Oh? For the last couple of years, up until a few weeks ago, I've been sort of a, a guest of the state, shall we say. Penitentiary, huh? 
Well, if you want to put it crudely, yes. Well, I'll tell Julian hello for you when I see him, Val Jane. That may be before long. <laughs> Fifteen minutes later, I pulled up in front of my office. I climbed the stairs and went in. I was expecting that Lima would be waiting for me, but he was nowhere in sight. Then I spotted it on my desk. A little slip of paper. I picked it up and read it. Shane, I've learned that you are looking for me and I want to talk to you. Come to my old address at once and wait for me there. Julian. Yeah, Julian, at last. I slipped the note in my pocket and waited a while for Lima, but he didn't show up. So about 9 p.m., I went over to Julian's old address. Both Yi Fong and Valdane's places were closed for the night. I went up the rickety outside stairway, in the door, and down the hall to the door at the end, Julian's old room. He told me to wait for him. That meant he wouldn't be there yet. The door was unlocked. I opened it and went in. The room looked lived in. Not like it had been vacant for two years. Then I heard the door softly close behind me. Without turning around, I knew it had been a trap. Then I heard another sound. A gun was slowly being cocked. And I realized this was the end of the line. Payoff time. Yeah, little Mike had finally solved the case the hard way. In a moment, we'll be back with a thrilling climax to tonight's Michael Shane adventure. Well, there I was in Julian's old room with a gun at my back and a pretty strong hunch as to who was holding that gun. One look over my shoulder told me my hunch was right. Hello, Shane. You can turn around now. Hello, Valdez. So you're my boy, hmm? I'm afraid it's the other way around, my friend. You're my boy. Yeah. Well, it was beginning to add up to you, Valdez, once I got all the figures together. Huh? Just what were the figures, Shane? Figure one. Lima suddenly comes into extensive holdings in Cuba two years ago. Now, just suppose it hadn't been quite legal that he'd hired someone like Julian, for example, to help him. Maybe a little forgery to help him acquire those holdings. Well, well. You added the first column of figures very accurately. Thanks. So then maybe Lima starts getting blackmailed by the guy who'd done the forgery for him. What Lima never knew was that Julian had a few boys working for him. That it was one of those boys who'd done the forgery, not Julian. A boy named Valdane. You're a little sharper than I thought, Shane. I hadn't figured you'd tumble to that. Well, you very obligingly tipped me off to it a little while ago. I did? Mm Mm-hmm. You told me you'd been in jail for the last couple of years. And just got out a couple of weeks ago. Lima told me he hadn't heard from Julian for two years until he got that letter a few days ago. So it added up that the letter supposedly from Julian was actually written by you. Just as you'd written the other blackmail notes before you went to prison. Well, I can see I did the right thing when I decided to put you out of the way, Shane. You were getting too close to me. That was pretty neat, too, Valdane, the way you... And you're getting too close to me now. Get back, Shane. The way you hired Joey to tell me Julian was alive. Then you even got Celeste to help you. Yes. Yes, I've been keeping her consoled in the absence of Julian. She very obligingly left that note in your office telling you to come here. Well, that's just about the story, Shane. And you stalled all you're going to. Well, it was worth a try. Incidentally, was it you who was following me while I made the rounds looking for Julian? No, it was I. Lima. Hey. Drop that gun, Valdez. Drop it. Now. Lima, how'd you know to come here? Very simple. When you telephoned me to meet you at your office, I went there and found the note signed Julian, telling you to come here. I came over right away, and I've been waiting in the next room. Look, Lima, Julian really is dead. I know that, senor. Huh? I I killed him two years ago. You what? Lima, don't move, (laughs) Aldin. I thought Julian was the one who had done the forgery for me and was blackmailing me. I did not know there were men working for him. I killed him, and the blackmail note stopped. Then when I got another one last week in the same handwriting, I realized it had not been Julian after all. 
I came to New Orleans. You hired me to find Julian and then followed me, huh? Yes. I hope that in your investigation you would uncover a member of Julian's organization, the real blackmailer. And you did? It is Valde. Lima, I, I, I won't blackmail you anymore. I, I swear it. It is too I... late for that, Valde. It is too late for you to do anything but die. I started trying to circle around toward Lima, but I never got there. Valdane dove at him about then, but too late. The slug caught Valdane in midair and flopped him down on the floor. He lay still. Lima stood there for maybe 30 seconds, alternately looking down at Valdane and up at me. There was a faint suggestion of a smile on his face, not a very pretty smile. And finally, he turned to me and took a step toward me. So? Now look, Lima. You are next, Senor Shane. Your job is done. And mine will shortly be finished also. Oh, now, wait a minute. I will not wait. It will be now. I... Who is making noise? I'm frightening guppies, please. Get back. I should get away from you. Thanks, she bumped. Thanks a lot. Oh. I do not understand, please. What is commotion all about? You know, you just did me a big favor, Yi Fang. It took Lima's eyes off me just long enough for me to clip him. But I do How'd not... How did you happen to come barging up here anyway? I live back of shop downstairs. Suddenly, I hear big noise from upstairs. I do not like guppies to be frightened. I run up to see what causes big noise. You got here just in time to stop another big noise, too. I have become very enraged when guppies are frightened. Well, you know something? I'm glad you do. Look, Yifong, do me a favor, huh? Tell me about a dozen of those guppies of yours first thing in the morning. Ah, so... Very happy to hear from you. Finally decide you like Guppy. Oh, you converted me, brother. Here, yeah, from now on, I'm an ardent Guppy fan. Believe me. The room was dark, except for a ray of moonlight coming through the window.